Happy Monday adventure. Oh my goodness, my camera is shaking. It's, I have a case of the Mondays, so that's real. Um, I hope that you had a great weekend and that you are moving into this week kind of in a fresh and renewed place. Um, this is random, but I haven't been sleeping very well. And so last night was the first night I slept well in a number of days. And so this morning I didn't feel refreshed. I felt like I just wanted more of that really good sleep. And so really just trying to reposition myself in this day and, and focus on Lord. Okay. If I physically feel tired, if I physically am in a place where I feel like I just keep, get, can't keep going, I need to start my day. I need to start my week in the word. And so I would encourage you, if that's kind of the place you find your Monday or the start of your week in, that you would do that as well. There is something that is so affirming and confirming in the start of our week by starting it where truth lies. You know, the Bible isn't just true, it is truth. And when we approach it in that way, it changes our perspective. So this, today we're going to be in Psalm 65. Um, and so if you haven't had a chance to read that, go ahead, pause your video, and then jump back on with us. Psalm 65 is really the first of four different psalms that lead through this praise of who God is. And I found over the course of this, the way that I read the Psalms has kind of changed over the past year. And so before I would just kind of read it and think, okay, Lord, what do you have in it for me? But what I realized is that if I break down the Psalm and think about what it says about God, and then what it says that the Psalmist will do or what I will do, it changes my perspective. And so I really was, um, I had figured that out through reading Psalm 119 a number of years ago, but I've forgotten it really. Um, you know how things just kind of slip out of out of your mind when you don't use them. It was one of those things. And so in the last week, really just kind of came back to that thought of, Lord, you show yourself in the Psalm in terms of your character and in terms of who you are and what you do. But there's also a part of that, that the Psalmist, in this case, David, says what we are to do. And so in Psalm 65, I love how it starts out with this, praise is due to you, or your translation might read, praise waits for you in silence, meaning all the praise that comes God's way is more than deserved. He is worthy of that, and waiting on that is what he is doing. He is due all of our praise because of what he does. You know, if you read through this psalm, you'll see some of the things that God does. He hears our prayer. He atones, he chooses us. He has awesome deeds that he answers us with righteousness. When you look specifically at the last verses, verses nine through 13, this provides a really a up close view of what God does to provide all that we need. You know, there can be um, times where we're worried about, are, am I gonna be able to make the bills? Or am I gonna be able to make ends meet? Is there enough money to do X, Y, and Z? I need to repair the car and, something has broken in the house or I need to do this, right? Sometimes we just feel like ends don't meet the way that they need to. And and in the New Testament, Jesus has a lot to say about that in his teaching, but David in this Psalm also declares that. Listen to what it says in verses nine through 13. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain for for so you have prepared it. You water, water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your ragged tracks overflow with abundance. And so what it's describing is that the Lord is the one that cares and provides for us as we walk and live on this earth. Now, the challenge for us is, is that he doesn't necessarily provide for us in the way that we think that he should or the way that we expect. But what it says is that he visits the earth and waters it. He provides for the earth in the way that it needs to. He also provides for us in that same way. He crowns the year with your bounty, meaning he's the one that provides the harvest. He is the one that provides what we reap. And so being able to trust him um, in provision is a is a hard lesson sometimes for us to learn. I had a girlfriend who was telling me about um, kind of one of the teachings she had heard of Jesus when it comes to if if he even feeds the sparrows, why would he not feed us? And the way that she had taught that to her kids is that God sends the rain so that the worms come out of the ground so that the birds are able to eat, right? That's where they kind of get their nutrients. And if he cares that much about sending the worms up through the ground to the birds, how much more does he care for us in our state of being made in his image? And so I don't know what God's provision looks like in your life. I don't know what you're waiting for him to do or what you're waiting for him to show up with. But he is a God who is faithful. He is a God that keeps his promises. 
promises that are found in this word. And what he asks us to do is to trust and obey. And so as followers of his, as those of us who are walking this with God life, he promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us and that he has abundant favor over his creation. And so part of what we get to do is walking in that is to have eyes that look for him. Because I don't know if you're like me, but I can go through my day a lot of times and I'm going at like super fast speed. And so at the super fast speed, I'm not actually seeing anything outside of what is on my line of sight and what I need to get accomplished for the day. But God doesn't always work in my direct line of sight. God a lot of times works in the periphery. And so are my eyes, are our eyes open to see what he is actually doing, to take in what takes place outside of our line of sight, to see how he's providing for us? Because it might be in ways we don't expect. It might be in conversations or situations that we never would have anticipated. And so in this place of declaring God as a God who is worthy of our praise, a God who is our Savior and our Lord, Will we look for him in a different way? Will we look to see how he provides in a different way because we know who he is? But we can't do that unless we know who he is. So our challenge is just that, to look at who he is, to get to know him as our God and as our friend. And as we do that, to look for him out in our tangible life, to see how he is working to provide for us and care for us and love us because we are his children. And if he desires to take care of the birds, um, then he desires to take care of us, the ones that are made in his image. Let me pray for us as we wrap up on this Monday. Father God, I thank you that you love us with a love that we can't understand. I thank you that you provide for us in ways that we don't even know. And Lord, I pray that in this place of walking the with God life and following after you, that our eyes would be open and would be sensitive to who you are and how you move and how you work. Lord, we don't want to miss you. We don't want to miss your hand because we're so distracted by the, the routine and the, and the drive and the persistence to make it through the day. Lord, give us eyes and a heart and ears that are open to see you and to open to hearing how you're moving and working in our lives. Lord, don't let us miss that. It is too great of a blessing for us to miss out on. And Lord, I just pray that you would, you would bend our hearts towards you, that we would constantly be seeking after you in the little things and in the big things. And that when we see you working on our behalf, that we will bring you glory and honor that you are so deserving of. Lord, I thank you that you love us with a love that is way bigger than we could ever wrap our heads around. We love you too. Amen. Have a great rest of your Monday and we will see you soon. Bye-bye.